Hey YouTube, this is Justin with Alternative Drummer. Now, one question that I get asked pretty often is how do you get out there and you start playing drums with other people? Like maybe you've been playing drums for a couple of years now and you feel like you're ready to start jamming with other people. Where do you even start with this? Um, this is a good question. You know, in today's society, it's a little bit more difficult than it used to be to start playing music with other people. I think just because a lot of things are online now, we'll talk about that more here in a little bit. But there's also less community spaces than there used to be back in, say, the 1990s when I really cut my teeth in punk bands and things like that. So I wanted to talk about what you can do and ways you can get started playing music with other people, playing drums with other people. Now, as you can see, there's a few bullet points over there that we're going to talk about. But before we even get into that, what I wanted to talk about first was be sure you are realistic about your abilities. There's a lot of people who either sell themselves short, are better than they think they are, and then there's also a lot of people out there, probably more, who are not as good as they think they are. This doesn't mean that you have to be an absolute expert and you know top-notch drummer to get out there and play with other people. But what you want to do is find people who are close to your ability as far as musicianship. You definitely don't want to be the drummer that's dragging the entire band down, but also you don't want to be the drummer who's just better than everybody else in the band. Uh, both of these things is pretty lopsided. You know, you definitely want to make sure that you're a good fit. So what is the best way to truly assess your playing? Record yourself playing the drums, especially if you record yourself playing to a song. If you just record yourself like playing drums by yourself, you may be doing like solos and things like that and maybe thinking, oh, I'm awesome but maybe you're not awesome, you know? Try it to music and see how it works. Uh, because in order to play in a band or with other people, you need to be able to stay on time and you need to be able to be tight. That's really the most important thing. You might have a bunch of chops and everything, but if it's not tight, it really doesn't matter. So record yourself, give yourself an honest assessment, and then get started on the rest of the things on this list, okay? Okay, so number one, joining a band. Uh, this is probably the easiest thing to do if you want to start playing drums with people compared to everything else on this list. Now, the reason why I say it's easiest and what I mean by joining a band, because you can see under that I have start a band, but if you're joining a band that already has songs and material and shows and a system in place, then this is the easiest way to go. And how do you find bands that are looking for drummers? Uh, one of the places I look quite often is Craigslist. So you can see right here, I just typed in band seeking drummer and I have a ton of results here, but I know I am in New York City, so I'm gonna have a lot more results than say somebody in the middle of the country, uh, but it still is a good resource. Now, if you're in other countries that doesn't have Craigslist, there may be a online bulletin board type thing such as Craigslist where you live as well. Uh, there's also Facebook. Facebook ha has a lot of groups and we're gonna talk about uh, that a little bit more in the collaboration section of this video. Uh, but Facebook, Reddit is another one where you could look. Now, I'm not crazy about Reddit personally because I feel like there's way too much gatekeeping on that website. Uh, there's a lot of people that run those subreddits that just get all uppity about you posting anything that goes against all of their nitpicky little rules and they'll ban you or they'll, they'll delete your post or they'll downvote it. And to me, it's just barely worth using. But I know some people have some luck on Reddit, so I figured I would mention it. So there are online resources. The other thing that you could do is actually go to your local music store, whether it be a Guitar Center or a Sam Ash or you know something else, and look for a bulletin board. A lot of them have a place in the store where there's a physical bulletin board and people post, you know, they put up their flyers there uh, for bands looking for drummers or bands looking for this and that. Uh, so definitely check out the bulletin board. There's also rehearsal spaces. Uh, if you live in a city that has rehearsal spaces, they often have bulletin boards as well. Uh, so check out the bulletin boards, check out your uh, papers, your local papers, your Craigslist, all these places you can find bands looking for drummers. Uh, I do suggest finding a band that you like. Uh, you don't really wanna just join a band just to join a band. I have done this. Uh, I did this once down in Florida uh, when I was living down there. I actually joined a band that I didn't really care for the music that much. <laughs> I just wanted to play the drums. Uh, and it, I, after a while, I felt kind of bad because, you know, I just, 
I realized after I joined that band, you know, that they were they were relying on me. So I I really you know I stayed in it longer than I really wanted to, uh, but you know out of guilt. So don't put yourself in that situation. Uh, just join a band that you like and that you're interested, you know, in the music. Uh, it doesn't have to be an original band. It can be a cover band. It can be whoever, you know, anything you're into. Okay, let's talk about the second thing I have on the list here, starting a band. Now, starting a band is without a doubt the hardest thing that you will do <laughs> on this list, and maybe in your life, uh, because starting a band can be very difficult. There's a lot of things that go into starting a band. Uh, number one, you have to find the people. Number two, you have to have an idea as to what you're going to do. What material are you going to play? Do you write your own material? Are you going to be a cover band? Is it going to be a collaborative effort where everybody comes up with the songs together? Is it going to be something where you're writing all the music? Um, now, all of these things you need to consider. And the one where it's like, you know, everybody says, everybody says it's going to be collaborative. So many people say that. But this is like almost never truly the case uh, because it takes a very special group of people to be able to write music as a group. Uh, usually this takes people who really connect very well. And it's not only hard to find one person to connect with very well, to find a group of people that you all connect with and are all on a you know very similar wavelength, wavelength where to where you can you know create music and write music as a group together is quite difficult so i suggest if you're starting a band have material yeah. already even if you know you eventually want to get that to that collaborative effort you should have at least a couple of songs that you're going to start with whether they're your own songs or cover songs have a plan things will happen much quicker if you have some kind of musical plan you know, some people also, they're like, you know, you have to have how, what your rehearsal plan is, what your gig plans are going to be, who's going to be booking the gigs. All of that stuff needs to be considered. So if you've never played with anybody before, I recommend joining a band before starting a band. Uh, however, you know, maybe you don't want to join a band. Maybe you want to do your own thing. And by all means, do it uh, if that's what you really want to do but just be prepared for the work. Starting a band takes a lot of work, more than anything else on here. Um, okay, so number three, fill in on a gig. Now, if you're to the level where you can fill in, then chances are you might not even be watching this video uh, because people who can fill in on gigs usually have quite a skill set on the drums because you're going to have to learn a lot of music in a short period of time and you're going to have to, you know, come in and basically be a, you know, a hired gun. So that can either be at a live gig or maybe it could be a studio session, um, which, you know, maybe that's not filling in on a gig, but you could be hired, you know, to be a studio musician. Uh, but chances are, like I said, maybe you're not to that level yet. So I don't know why I even put that on this list, but I figured I would mention it. But, you know, there could be some bands out there that have more simple songs that maybe you could fill in on uh, if you're a beginner. Uh, or maybe you are really good at drums and you just still never played with anybody. So if that's the case, then fill in. Do, go for it. Maybe you don't want to make a big commitment. You know, th this presents a good opportunity where you could come in and just play a little bit of drums and then not have to come there every week to do rehearsals and all that stuff. So filling in is a good option. So I'm glad I put it on the list. Anyway, the last thing I want to talk about here is collaborating online. Now, this is one of my favorite things to do, and I've been collaborating with a lot of people over the past couple of years. Uh, and, you know, your results will vary. Uh, what I'm going to show you, though, uh, here after I finish talking is a collaborative effort that I did with a musician that I met through Facebook uh, in Germany. He's in Berlin, Germany. Um, he goes by the name of Tommy Countach. Well, first off, let me tell you about how we actually met. Uh, there is a synthwave group on Facebook, and I just really joined this group, you know, just because I like hearing new synthwave music. And so I was on there for a while and hearing stuff, and then I was like, you know, it'd be cool to uh, work with one of these people. And so I posted a, you know, just a short post on, on the group saying that I'm a drummer and I was looking for people to, you know, to record with or to do something with. And Tommy reached out to me and replied to the post and I really liked what he was doing. 
and he suggested that maybe we should do like a split screen video and that was exactly what I was thinking too and I was like all right yeah cool let's do that so what he did is he set up his gear and recorded everything basically in one video and audio track and then sent it to me and I took that and I played drums to it and recorded myself on video and I sent him back all of the audio and he mixed all the audio in with what he did and he sent me back all of the audio and I edited everything together and put it into a video. And this went really, really smooth and I'm really, really happy with the result. I think it came out great. Um, I think Tommy is an awesome musician and we just clicked really well. Um, this was an ideal collaboration. Not all of them go this smoothly though. Like, you know, you have to get out there and try it. I've had other situations where somebody asked me to collaborate, you know, on a song uh, in a different place and I sent them some drum, they sent me the music and I played some drums over it. And initially I was very happy with the result. Uh, however, when they, they basically hired somebody to mix the track and when they mixed my drums, they replaced every single, like I used my 69 Pearl kit and I really love the way that kit sounds. But the engineer, uh, the mixer, replaced every single one of my drum sounds with a VST, like, uh, like Superior Drummer or something that just sounds really cheesy. Like it just does not sound natural at all. And I just was not happy with how that mix came out at all. So, I mean, I know that it was their song, so I wasn't like mad and they were happy with it. So I was like, okay, you know, if you wanna use it, that's fine. But to me, it's like not one of those songs that I really even share with people because I just don't like how the drums came out. Um, I think my playing was good on it, but I just really just do not like the mix. And then I've had other situations uh, where I was collaborating with a group of people online where everything was going great, where what happened is one of the people just disappeared. Like we just stopped hearing from them and uh, that can happen as well. Uh, so that kind of made that project lose its momentum, uh, even though we did get a few uh, things out before that happened. Um, but you know, your results may vary, but the great thing about collaborating online is there's so many people out there and you, you can just keep trying new things and trying, you know, new styles. And the way to find these, uh, you know, it's the, the same type of thing as if you're looking to join a band or something like that. But really here, you're not really going to look in the physical locations like music stores, pretty much all social media. You can look on, you know, Facebook groups, which is what I did, Reddit, Instagram, uh, all of those places are going to have people posting music, YouTube even. Uh, but yeah, collaborating online is really great and it's a really fun thing to do. So on that note, let me show you this video that I just made uh, with Tommy Kontak uh, from Berlin, Germany. And I think it came out really good. And I'm going under my new music project name here, uh, which is called Mockman Mini. And uh, yeah, this song is called Laser Tag Champion. So here we go.
All right, that's gonna be all for this video, everybody. Hopefully you found it educational and helpful. Let me know if you found these tips helpful. Uh, what works for you? What doesn't work for you? Have you collaborated with people online? Uh, have you joined a band with a bunch of strangers that you met through a post somewhere? Uh, let me know. I'd like to hear about it. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you all really soon. Have a great day.